Hi, this is Johnny Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago as usual, and today is our lucky day. I could not have asked for anything more. I can't believe this even happened. Uh, this was sent to me by Randy. Thank you. Uh, w- what we have here is an Australian soft sit, or he, he might uh, consider himself a Freeman on the land. Either way, uh, showing up in Judge Elise Berni- Bryant's court, it's beautiful. <laughs> Let's do it. From the secret headquarters of the Sovereign Citizen Patrol, initiating video production sequence. We are no longer playing. So let's get revved up. It's time for Law Talk with Mike. Two zero. Six two seven. Two two zero one. The people of the state of Michigan versus James Matthew Tires. The defendant is charged with one count of disorderly disturbance. And today is the date set for a pretrial conference. Ms. Ritter, your appearance, please. For the record, Your Honor, Christina Ritter on behalf of the people. Mr. Tires, your appearance, please. There is no Mr. Tyres. My name is James Matthew of the family Tyres. This has been established not only in your... Nope. Okay, his name is James Matthews of the Tyres family. Today is the date (laughs) set for a pretrial conference. How how are we proceeding today? Mr. James Matthews of the Tyres family. (laughs) You've been communicated with, Judge, on several occasions. Sir, so you don't Christine, know if I've been communicated with. Yes, I do, because I have documents. That. I have certified. Okay, I'm going to mute you. Um, <laughs> you don't have anything with my name, with my signature on it. You don't know if I've been communicated with. You may be able to ask me if I've been communicated with, but you don't know if I've been communicated with. So please don't say that I've been communicated with. You may have communicated with the court. You may have communicated with the court clerk. You may have communicated with the court administrator, but you have not communicated with me, nor do you know whether I've received any communication. If you want to indicate that you have sent a document and you want to ask me if I received it, then we can discuss that. However, you don't know what I have received, nor who I've been in communication with. You may proceed. Oscar says hit like and subscribe. Well, and hit the bell notification. Thanks, Oscar. On the 19th of August, I spoke to you personally in your Zoom court, just as I'm doing today, and I gave you the details of the situation. I also told you on the public court record that you'd been served with an affidavit of truth. <laughs> that affidavit was sent to you in August. It was received by the 36th District Court in in August. It became judgment and truth in law in September. Nope. It was also sent to Christina Ritter. It was also sent to the clerk of the court who proceeded to send them back first class mail without any communication. During that communication that I did speak to you regarding this situation, you abandoned ship. <laughs> of the court and refused to address the situation. That is all recorded, witnessed and videoed outside the front of the court. Since that time, I spoke to Christina Ritter after making five attempts to address the situation that should have been remedied a long time ago because of the criminal behavior conducted by two police officers, one man and one woman. Because Christina Ritter decided to put the phone down on me again, abandoning ship and not wanting to deal with the situation. <laughs> Can you imagine I said, why we do that? Do you know why we do that? Because, because you didn't want to address the situation. Really? I didn't want to address the situation, even though this is what I do all day, every day, five days a week, is address situations. It probably, it probably was because on the day that you were outside of the courthouse, refusing to 
to put on the, the uh, mask that was mandated by the um, chief judge in order to enter the court building. And then you kept talking over me. And then I, I um, removed you from the courtroom. And so you call it abandoning ship. And I call it maintaining proper decorum of the courtroom. Um, Ms. Muldrow, do you have the file for Mr. Tires? There is no Mr. Tires, Judge. Don't I interrupt me. I can call you Mr. Tires if I want to. Okay, well, I'm and just making That is the name that appears on the docket. And so as the name appears on the docket, that is how what? I address all individuals who come before can my I ask, court. Can I ask a at question, this particular please? moment, at this particular moment, I am speaking to my court clerk, and I would appreciate if you would not interrupt that communication. Ms. Muldrow, do you, can you look in the file and tell me have I received any filings or anything from regarding this matter? Judge, I'm looking in the file and there's no motions or anything in here at all. So, sir, we have not received any motions despite you saying that I you didn't use the motion. I served you with an affidavit of truth. And last Friday, the 7th of January 2022, you were served with a second one that went to I you, wasn't Karen. served with anything because last Friday on January of 22, I was on an airplane to Arizona. You, so you didn't you might serve me it. with anything, sir. You might have been. It was sent to the 36th District Court along with one that was sent to Christina Ritter via the prosecutor's office and the 36th District okay. Court. And one was sent to the clerk of the court. Well, I'm not here to want, argue with you, you, Judge. You I'm not here to me? argue with you. Can I ask a question? You may. What is the colour and age of the man allegedly on the docket? I could care less about the color or the age of the man. Okay, so here we are. We're not getting anywhere. Ms. Ritter, how did the people wish to proceed with this case? Are you? Do you have a complaining witness? Your Honor, so um, just a little procedural background on this case. It started out as a felony with count one, uh, assaulting, resisting, and obstructing a police officer, which was dismissed at the exam stage, leaving count two, disturbing the peace, um, left for this matter, which is the misdemeanor uh, count in front of your honor. So at this time, the people um, are ready to proceed on disturbing the peace charge, Judge. All right. As so the people's understanding that there is no complaining witness needed for that disturbing the peace charge. The court is going to enter a not guilty plea on behalf of Mr. Tires. Now, if Mr. Tires isn't going, is, if there is no Mr. Tires, then, then, then I would appreciate this other person not showing up for court. So if you're not Mr. Tires, please don't come back to my courtroom um, because the only person that I'm interested in is Mr. Tires. I don't know what his color is and it is of no, of no consequences to me. I don't know what his age is and that is of no consequences to me. I don't know what his race is and that is of no consequences to me. What I know is this, if you're not Mr. Tires, just don't show up. I want to just deal with Mr. Tires. That's the only person that this case is against. And if that is not you, then perhaps it's someone else. But please stop showing up on the case that is for Mr. Tires. All right. So as it relates to Mr. Tires, apparently he didn't show up. Uh, um, Mr. Tires hasn't shown up today. And therefore, I'm, I'm going to just save this case to the end of the docket, as I do with all the other uh, failure to appears. And I will address Mr. Tyre's case at the end of the docket a, as a failure to appear. Mr. James Matthew, um, have a nice day. You never have to come back because you're not Mr. Tyre's. Um, so I appreciate you. I don't know. Come into... Uh <clears throat> whole thing was just a, a thing of beauty. I stayed out of the way because it's just so delicious in and of itself. Uh, he, he's he, his argument, I believe, is is he's served her with affidavits of truth, which are meaningless and, and and have no bearing on anything. She doesn't have anything in the in the court file, uh, so he's just th throwing nonsense at her. I don't know if she's ever received it or whatever. It does it doesn't matter. It has no it has no effect. It hasn't made the court file. wasn't wasn't properly filed. Isn't and it isn't before the court. 
And uh, she does what I think is is very good, which is just look, if you're not going to acknowledge that you are the person charged, then I'll just th- throw this at the end of my call. I'll just pass it. And then at that time, if no one's there, then I'll probably issue a bench warrant for the person, which of course she knows is him and he knows is him. And then we'll we'll probably do this whole thing uh, 30 days from now after he gets picked up, picked up off a warrant. Uh, it's, it's just, it's just too good. Uh, she explains it to him. I think she makes it perfectly clear, but if, if that doesn't do it, do it for you, Mr. Tires, Mr. Tire, whatever, James Matthew of the family tire, how, however you want to be addressed. Maybe, maybe, maybe judge Rangel can explain it to you. What I've said to you right now has not sunk in, has not sunk in. You really still don't grasp it. That's what you need to understand. And you don't. And that's where I want to help you. Just, uh, I don't know, on his behalf, I guess. I, I really don't know uh, why you showed up today. Um, if you want to file a motion with the court, you can file a motion with the court. However, I'm not going to entertain anything else. And you are yelling at me at this moment. And so I won't entertain you. Um, so thank you so much. You have a great day. I, I just love how she has my mute. He's going to town, but she's she's having none of it. He won't acknowledge that he's there. She's got a case. She called it. From her perspective, she is legally absolutely correct. Uh, I've called a case. The defendant is not here. We're wasting our time. Send it over to the end of the call and recall it. If the defendant doesn't show up at that point, then uh, then she'll she'll take whatever appropriate action. She could just set another date on it or or issue a bench warrant. My guess is she issues a bench warrant. <laughs> and stay safe. All right. Mr. Soroki, I'm bringing in the city attorney. Did you need to speak with the city attorney on your two cases? Yes. All right, I just left that last little bit in there because I I, I think it's uh, it, it adds a nice punctuation to it. She just swats this nonsense down. She doesn't even get her blood up over it. She's just like, no, I'm not doing this. <laughs> and then she goes on with her business. I mean, it, it, it didn't even affect her. And, and, and she's absolutely correct. Uh, we've got a criminal case. You're saying you're not the defendant. Okay, well, then the defendant's failed to appear. And the, the, the consequences for the defendant not appearing are, 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 are what they are, and I'll deal with it at the end of the call. I'm just going to pass it for now. That makes all the sense in the world. It, it, this is just too good. She had one other. I, by the way, I, I have a playlist for her. I'll put a card up I, at the end of this uh, for the Lunis Bryant playlist. I, it, it is fantastic, if I do say so myself. I think it's the finest Lunis Bryant uh, playlist on the internet, maybe the only one. <laughs> But in that playlist, I've got another video called um, Greatest Soft Sit uh, Shutdown Ever, and that is fantastic as well. And this is cool. This is like a Freeman on the land Australian dude, and that is a more sovereign citizen. So she's running the whole gamut here. But uh, but she has no patience for nonsense uh, in, in any circumstance, nor should she. Here at Law Talk, we like to have fun with uh, silly stuff that happens in court and every once in a while and completely by accident, I assure you, you might learn something. Thanks for watching.